The new T4 four-speed manual transmission is standard equipment on AMC automobiles beginning with 1982 models. Also, all AMC automobiles and most Jeep vehicles are available with the new T5 five-speed. This film and its associated reference piece are designed to provide you with an understanding of how these transmissions operate and familiarize you with the procedures required to service them. In this film, we'll begin our discussion by looking at the design features of these new transmissions. Then, we'll discuss some overhaul highlights. These are unique procedures you should be familiar with before you attempt to disassemble a T4 or T5 transmission. Complete step-by-step -step overhaul procedures are detailed in the bench chart included in this kit, along with power flow charts and all specifications pertaining to both transmissions. These transmissions were designed with a family concept in mind. That is, they share many design features and a number of the components are interchangeable. The principal internal components of both transmissions are the clutch shaft, the output shaft, a live counter shaft, and a reverse idler shaft. Two versions of the T4 are used one for two-wheel drive vehicles and another for four-wheel drive vehicles. Both utilize aluminum cases, covers, and extension housings. The only external difference between the two versions is that the two-wheel drive unit features an elongated tail shaft housing, while the four-wheel drive versions utilize an adapter housing, which bolts to the transfer case. Two versions of the T5 are also used, one for two-wheel drive vehicles, and one for four-wheel drive vehicles. Again, the external difference is the use of an elongated extension housing for the two-wheel drive unit and an adapter housing for the four-wheel drive unit. The only internal difference is the location of the speedometer drive gear. On the two-wheel drive versions, the gear is positioned on the output shaft while on four-wheel drive versions, the speedometer gear is located inside the transfer case. The shift mechanism is an integral design with a single rail shifter located inside the transmission cover. This design is more precise than an external linkage. It also results in continuous lubrication of the shift mechanism. Shifter noise is held to a minimum by a combination of design features. In addition to a decorative boot at the base of the shift lever, a noise barrier sealing boot is located on the floor of the vehicle. A noise isolator, which is integrated into the shift lever itself, further contributes to quiet shifter operation. A unique feature is the use of tapered roller bearings on the clutch and output shafts. The counter shaft utilizes straight roller bearings. The T5's output shaft and counter shaft differ from the T4's only in that they incorporate additional components that provide the fifth speed overdrive range. The driven gear is located on the output shaft and the drive gear and synchronizer assembly are positioned on the counter shaft. The ratio of the overdrive gears is either 0.76 to 1 or 0.86 to 1 depending on the engine size and axle ratio selection. By reducing the engine RPMs required to maintain highway speeds, this overdrive feature provides three benefits. Improved fuel economy, reduced engine wear, and quieter engine operation. Here's an important point regarding lubrication. The recommended lubricant for both transmissions is automatic transmission fluid. As noted earlier, complete overhaul procedures are contained in the bench chart included in this kit. But there are some important highlights that you should be familiar with before you attempt to disassemble a T4 or T5. In our discussion, we'll be focusing on the T5. Keep in mind that most of these also apply to the T4. There are no gaskets used in these transmissions. 
RTV is used on most ceiling surfaces. Be sure to have metric tools readily available. All threaded bolts and holes, except the fill plugs and gear shift lever attaching bolts, are metric. Here's an important point regarding removal from the vehicle. The shift lever and its retaining plate must be removed before the transmission is removed. Otherwise, the lever will hang up on the underbody when you try to pull the transmission back and down. To remove the lever, remove the bolts attaching the lever to the extension housing or adapter housing. Once the transmission is on the bench, remove the roll pin that secures this offset lever to the shift rail. Do not try to remove the lever at this point. Remove the bolts that secure the tail shaft housing to the case. Incidentally, on four-wheel drive versions, the adapter housing bolt pointed out here screws into the adapter housing, while the others pass through the housing and screw into the transmission case. So don't forget to remove this bolt with the others when you unbolt the adapter housing. RTV is used between the tail shaft housing and the case. You may have to pry on the housing to break this bond. As you remove the tail shaft housing, slide the offset lever off the shift rail. The offset lever works in conjunction with a detent spring, ball, and plate to provide the positive feeling in the shift lever during gear changes. The offset lever moves the detent ball into a depression in the plate when the driver shifts the transmission. There is a depression for each gear range. An elongated depression for neutral allows the driver to move the shift lever from side to side. There are also some unique shift mechanism components inside the case. The spring-loaded fifth speed reverse lever assembly helps the transmission shift into fifth and reverse gear ranges. When the driver shifts into reverse gear, the shouldered rivet moves to the lower forward end of the lever, exerting pressure on the lever. The lever slides the reverse idler gear rearward to mesh with the first second speed sliding gear. When the transmission is shifted into fifth gear, the rivet is moved to the back of the lever. The lever then moves the fifth speed shift fork forward. This forces the fifth speed synchronizer onto the fifth speed drive gear. If you need to remove the lever assembly from the case, begin by removing this retaining ring. To remove the spring, use the method shown here, which requires only a screwdriver and a block of wood. Finally, remove the pivot bolt. You can then remove the lever assembly from the case. To reinstall the lever assembly and spring, reverse this removal procedure. It is recommended that you place reference marks on several components before you disassemble them. The fifth gear shift fork is one of these. This reference mark will prevent you from installing the fork backward during reassembly. The fifth gear synchronizer sleeve and hub must also be marked before removal. They must be reassembled in this same manner to ensure that the sleeve will slide smoothly over the hub. The front bearing cap must be marked so that it will be reinstalled in the same position in relation to the case. This is important because oil passages in the cap must be aligned with passages in the case. The fifth speed driven gear must be marked in relation to the output shaft. Once you've removed the output shaft from the case, completely disassemble, inspect, and reassemble the shaft assembly. Here, too, you'll need to place reference marks on various components prior to removal. This includes the third, fourth gear synchronizer sleeve and its hub, as well as the first, second sliding gear and the output shaft. You'll need a press and several special tools in order to remove and reinstall some components on the output shaft and clutch shafts. This includes the fifth speed driven gear. All of the clutch shaft and output shaft components must be thoroughly inspected replace any that are worn or damaged. 
Here's a very critical clearance check that you'll need to make during output shaft reassembly. This check measures the clearance between the second speed gear thrust washer and the snap ring located next to it. If this clearance exceeds the proper specification and the transmission is reassembled, the transmission will tend to jump out of gear. If necessary, you can bring this clearance within specification by replacing the snap ring and or thrust washer. In some cases, you may have to replace the output shaft. Use a press to disassemble the counter shaft components. First, remove the snap ring and spacer located at the rear of the shaft. Then, press on the front of the counter shaft until the rear bearing is forced out of the case. The front counter shaft bearing is unique. The bearing consists of a cup with rollers positioned around the inner perimeter of the cup. The cup must be sealed with Loctite. To remove the bearing, use a press and this special tool. Inspect the counter shaft components and replace any that are worn or damaged. After you've coated the front counter shaft bearing with Loctite and installed the bearing in the case, this thrust washer must be placed over the bearing. When you install the washer, make sure that the tab highlighted here is in the depression in the case. When you reinstall the counter shaft, be sure the tab remains in the case. The clutch shaft and output shaft bearings operate under a specific preload. This preload is controlled by a shim located in the front bearing cap. During reassembly, you'll need to determine what size shim is needed to establish the specified preload. To do this, begin by removing the clutch shaft front bearing race, the preload shim, and the oil seal from the front bearing cap. Then install a new oil seal using this special tool. And the bearing race. Do not install the shim at this point though. Install the front bearing cap aligning the reference marks. Do not apply RTV yet. Several reassembly steps must be performed at this point. We won't go into these here, we'll go directly to the preload adjustment. In order to determine the shim size required, you'll need to measure the clutch shaft end play. Set the transmission on end and mount a dial indicator on the case with the indicator stylus resting on the end of the clutch shaft. Rotate the clutch shaft and zero the indicator. Pull upward on the clutch shaft to eliminate all end play. Check the reading on the indicator. Your shim must be one thousandth to five thousandths of an inch thicker than the figure indicated on the dial indicator. Check the original shim to see if it falls into this range. If not, you'll need a different shim. Remove the bearing cap and install the shim. Reinstall the clutch shaft bearing race. Apply RTV to the case mating surface of the bearing cap and install the cap, aligning your reference marks. Torque the bolts to the proper specification. To double check preload, you can perform this torque to turn check. The tools required to perform this check are a torque wrench and a deep well socket. The torque required to turn the output shaft must be within the range shown here. If this is not the case, you'll need to vary the shim size. We've now covered all the design features of these new transmissions and the important overhaul highlights. Let's review them at this point. The T4 four-speed is standard on AMC automobiles beginning with 1982 models. The T5 five-speed is available on all AMC automobiles and most Jeep vehicles. These transmissions share many design features and a number of components are interchangeable. The principal design difference between the two transmissions is that the T5 features additional componentry that provides the fifth or overdrive range. Both transmissions utilize an integral shifter mechanism. In addition to being more precise than an external linkage, this design also facilitates continuous lubrication of the shift mechanism. 
The recommended lubricant is automatic transmission fluid. RTV is used on a number of sealing surfaces instead of gaskets. All threaded bolts and holes, except for the fill plugs and shift lever attaching bolts, are metric. The shift lever must be removed before the transmission is removed from the vehicle. Before you disassemble certain assemblies, you'll need to place reference marks on them. They must be reassembled in the same manner. A press and various special tools are recommended to disassemble and reassemble certain assemblies. There are two important checks that must be performed during reassembly. First, check the clearance between the second speed gear thrust washer and its snap ring. Then, check the clutch shaft and output shaft bearing preload. This involves checking clutch shaft end play to determine the required preload shim size. And double checking the preload with the torque to turn check. Remember that the bench chart included in this kit details complete overhaul procedures. It also lists specifications and identifies the type of lubricant required as well as change intervals.